and there you go. Welcome everyone to the Lord of Rigel development team's uh, developer session here. We've seen to have a lot of people go. today. It looks like we've got 11 viewers, which is great. Welcome everyone uh, to oh, oh, the yeah. Lord of Rigel <laughs> development team's uh, <laughs> developer session here. We've seen to have a lot of... Lol, I had a stream open in the background. Yeah, go on, please. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so for those of who are interested in getting more information about Lord of Rigel, uh, we do have a website. We have a basic forum uh, right now. It's uh, lordofrigel.com slash forum. And we also have a Facebook page where you can kind of get some basic information. We have post stuff on uh, models. I think this week we're going to uh, show off some of our models for the human fleet. But currently we have the Catraxi fleet, which is one of our uh, cat-like alien species up um and that link is uh facebook.com slash lord of rigel and we'll post that here in the text label yeah i'll do it now i guess so okay com slash lord of rigel and we'll post so today that here in the text um, label. we have tuxinet who's yeah, our I'll lead developer so, yeah. um and myself my name is uh Acurus, and um i'm the co-founder of rhombus studios and we're kind of the brainchild behind this game we're going to be working on our uh, Galaxy Generator. Um, we've made a lot of progress on it. Today, we're mainly going to focus on, on kind of fine-tuning stuff. Um, TuxNet's done some great work on getting a Nebula system pretty much working. Um, so we're going to go through today and just get some more fine-tuning done. Uh, this will be uh, part of the demo that we'll be, that we'll be releasing um, probably sometime in late November, early December, but more likely late November, um, as part of our Kickstarter campaign. Um, it will, um, this will be kind of half of the demo, um, to show you kind of what the galaxy map will look like. Um, the second half of the demo will be a tactical combat demo, and that will set up, um, just random systems for you to uh, play in. We'll have two playable fleets. We're going to have the human fleet and the Catraxi fleet. Um, the humans in this universe are kind of a um, sleek diplomatic species. Um, and the Catraxi are a... They're kind of like Klingons, I think would be the best way to put them. And if you've ever played uh, any of the Master of Orion series... Um, they're very similar to the Mershan. Um, the, we chose these two species because they are very different in terms of design. Um, and we are, are really wanting to show off kind of the different art directions um, that our team can have. So the humans are going to be a very symmetrical design, um, very sleek, soft-looking ships. Uh, the Catraxi are going to be asymmetrical and uh, lots of points, lots of spikes on them. Um, in fact, you can see them on our Facebook page. You can kind of see just how aggressive their ships are. Um, and hopefully next week, too, we'll also have a battleship to show you. Our, um, our modeler is currently just finishing up some UV mapping and getting that texture put on the model, but the model is complete. Um, Anyway, I'm going to let Tuxinet take it from here. If you have any questions, uh, we'll kind of answer them through the chat here as we go. Indeed. So, yeah, that, so, that's basically the short version of what the game is about. And most importantly, the playable demo we're going to release. So, I guess I'll, I'm going to just start off with uh, showing you guys what we currently have. Uh, and that is a working, like, galaxy generator, as we like to call it, or the galaxy view. So, um, if, we, if we, you know, uh, we have a nice menu made by uh, members of the team, Wu Legends and some other people. And here you have, like, the interface for the generator. And, uh, you know, you can choose stuff like the um, size of the galaxy, which is basically... If I remember correctly, like f from four stars to like over a thousand. So, you know, it's going to be a pretty big galaxy. And right now we have clustered and spiraled galaxies. So, let me just gen generate the galaxy here. And um, we don't have any like pretty visual effects in just yet. We have the basic stars and uh, general nebulas. 
uh, spawn around the galaxy. Uh, the nice thing about the galaxy gener generator, which we added like uh, about a week, a week and a half ago, is uh, the system view. And uh, basically that is, you can go to any star system in the galaxy. Everyone has a, um, like not everyone has necessarily planets and such, um, but, but the upper hand of them, or like um, most of the stars have some kind of planet or asteroid field. So if I just go to this red one, you see here we have the system view. And um, yeah, basically it's, this is a pretty small one with um, two planets and two asteroid rings. The biggest we can have is about 10 orbits. So, you know, it can be any combination, I guess, um, with uh, many different types of planets. Uh, asteroid rings, uh, s different sizes of planets, you know, it's, it's a lot of content. And the galaxy size I chose now to showcase is um, the biggest one, like 1024 stars. So that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, I guess if you want to generate a system or like a galaxy this big, you really want to play for a long time. Because, you know, then, then it'll, how long will it take to, like, finish a round, I guess? You know, it's, it's going to really depend on the player. You know, one of the things that we're really looking for uh, in Lord of Rigel at this point is, you know, for those of you who have played Master of Orion, Master of Orion 2, um, those are kind of what we're shooting to recreate and then obviously enhance since Master of Orion 2 was released in 1996. Um is, you know, the player can can choose things with having more star systems. They can choose to uh, just have a longer game if they want to play more aggressive. Um, they can choose to isolate themselves uh, in, inside of a larger galaxy. We're going to have 12 races. Um, so in a galaxy like this, you're going to have 12 races. And as well, we've chosen to scale the number of players in regards to the galaxy size. So a player that, that's going to play in a, in a huge galaxy like this is going to have probably a, a prolonged game. You know, it's going to depend on each player, um, how they want to play out. Obviously, uh, a game for that, you're, that you would win with a diplomatic victory or with a science-based victory would take probably longer. Um, but... You know, really, you know, hopefully in a galaxy this big, you know, you're looking at a game that's going to maybe last you a couple weeks, um, something like that, of on and off play, not, not continuous. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, players can also play in a smaller uh, map, which I believe is only 32 stars. Um, you can just get a quick game in. You can get the, kind of the feel uh, for it. So we're just trying to add scalability, and especially sometimes, too, in the late game, especially in Master of Orion with the galaxy being so small, once you kind of got into a stable position with your empire and your fleets, etc., you were quickly able to um, expand out and take over the galaxy very quickly, where we're hoping, with having the option, option for a larger galaxy, um, that will take you more time because obviously the player or the AI is going to have larger empires as well that you're going to have to conquer and that you'll get kind of more fulfillment uh, in doing so. Yep. Yep. And actually, uh, Cube, that's actually one of the things that we'll be working on today is actually um, making sure that our numbers for how we're generating our, our big spiral mm -hmm. um, do a better distribution of stars. Right now, um, it's not correct. Wait, we it can show you. Very yeah. Nice, I think. Oh, go ahead, Tuxina. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, it, it's yeah. just that um, we had it at a stage where, it, if, if you ask me, it looked awesome. Um, I prefer like two armed spirals um, because I think they look the best. Uh, but right now, we basically have like six arms and they're spinning around like crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, we're going to try today to. Uh to work on that through the live stream uh, and see if we can get the the larger armed galaxies. I think, uh, it's, I believe it's six arms uh, for our legendary size galaxy. Um, try to get those so the star distribution uh, is spread out more evenly 
um, and, and gives it kind of a, a better shape than it has right now. Oh, microtransactions. Oh. <laughs> no, thank you, Philip. <laughs> okay, I'm soon. I'm. I'm just cloning a fresh version of the project. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna be finished in like two minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. No. No microtransactions. So, when the game is released, it will be a full-fledged game. Um, and we'll be looking at, you know, there there is some stuff, especially uh, in terms of what we want to add. We're, we've at this point pretty much feature locked the game, so we're going to keep things where they're at. But there are some things, some stretch goals that we have. Um, and I think at this point we're going to take those stretch goals and just make them either an expansion pack or we're going to make them into downloadable content, smaller things. So... It's going to just depend when we get to the late phase of the game and we, we really see how many more ideas we have between now and then, whether we think it's going to be a full-fledged expansion or if you need to split things up more. But ideally, some of the things that you would be seeing in either an expansion or downloadable content would be something like each species um, having unique fleets, which they have now, or that we plan on having that in the full game. But they'll have them for each era. So in this game, you can start out at a very uh, basic era where your species has just gained uh, faster than light travel. And then you can uh, start in a mode where you kind of have like a pre-established empire, maybe, you know, four, five, six star systems. Um, and so one of the things that we'd like to do is try to um, have unique fleets for each of those. But I believe we have 10 classes of ships per species. So you start multiplying that out over 12. And that's just a lot of art assets. And it's just going to add more time. So to us, it's a feature we'd like to have. But it's nothing that would, should stop us from releasing the initial game. Um, so that's, that's kind of some stuff. Um, there's also the idea of adding some more species to it. And we might be able to do that later. Because um, this game will be very art intensive, um, yeah. because we yeah. want to have each species be unique, um, and that includes not just um, ships, but talking heads. Um, because when you're in diplomacy, we wanted to have a three talking head for each, um, and as well, looking at um, right now we're just gonna have one set of planetary buildings. So whether you play the Catraxi or the Tulak, or the humans, you're just going to see the same set of, of species buildings. It's just one big thing. But we'd like to, later on, um, as either an expansion or DLC, look at having some sort of uh, unique one for each species. Um, but again, I, I, I don't want to push our release back for something like that. It's a really cool feature, um, but I'd rather have everyone enjoy the product so that we can get more, re you know, obviously as people are buying the game, that's more money that we can put towards expanding our team, expanding our resources, uh, and providing everyone with a better game. Uh, looks like we have a question here about uh, black holes and supernovas. There are black holes in the game. Um, they're kind of hard to see in our galaxy generator, or in our, in our galaxy um, view. Um, yes, so... There will be, so, there are black holes, so, at the moment, what we have is black holes are, can, are, essentially, um, you can shoot them, or, oh, shoot them, sorry, I was, I was thinking about your later comment there, um, but black holes, essentially, are placed there, and obviously, ships can't travel through them, so they're kind of, like, uh, more of an obstruction right now, but in late game, our two elder species do have technology that allows stars to be harnessed and also to be destroyed. So star systems can be destroyed later. Um, and so it, it probably won't be an amazing effect in terms of art. It'll probably be more like you have the ability to go into a star system. You have a super weapon on your ship that can destroy the star there may be a little cutscene 
that shows, you know, your weapon destroying the star. But there's not going to be any massive explosions or effects or anything like that within the galaxy map. Uh, maybe uh, we can put like something like a pulsar in there or something like that. But we're just trying to keep things very simple. We think that's where a lot of 4X games have gone uh, kind of awry and have lost their way for Master of Orion is that they've gotten too complex. Um, it's difficult for players to get into them. Um, and as well, a lot of games have great ideas that work on paper, but when you actually play them, it just gets very cumbersome. Um, and I think you'll see, and I think you've kind of already seen us touching it, showed you kind of our interface. It's very simple, but it's very effective. You'll have everything that you can do in Master of Orion 2 and then some. Um, but it's not going to feel like this big cumbersome thing where the player doesn't understand what's going on around them or why one turn something is, is working and you're making money in the next turn, all of a sudden you're not making money. And that's unclear to the player. And that can be very frustrating. Um, so we're really working to minimize, just get back to the core basics of what made Master of Ryan 2 great, and then take some of the things that obviously uh, game companies have integrated over the years, like the Civilization series where you have better diplomacy, um, Better spying because that was a really that was kind of a weak point in Master of Ryan too was that you know spying was essentially a way for you to play defensive. Sometimes you could get technology, but it wasn't great, um, and so it could it it in this game what we've tried to do is say okay well let's make something more useful. Spying now is going to be more active. So let's say you're the humans and the Katraxi have an extremely aggressive leader. Um, that's threatening war against you. What if you could use your spies to plot an assassination of, of that person? So you dedicate spies to that, and that's going to increase your probability of killing that person. Um, and if you and if you were able to um, have that go successfully, they won't be any of the wiser. And now you have, and hopefully they'll install a new leader that's going to be more passive potentially, and that will help you. Um, the other question here is random disasters messing up. <laughs> Uh, random disasters, yeah. So there will be there will be random events, but they're not going to be anything that is going to be I want to say detrimental because there are going to be negative events. But it's not going to be something like, for instance, you know, some people try to make games real, so real to the point that it's not fun. You know, for instance, stars can go supernova sometimes, or you know, some some huge stellar event occurs and just knocks out your whole, you know, star system. We're not trying to do that. Master of Ryan 2 did have uh, random events where it was almost kind of a challenge to a player. So sometimes suns could, suns could go nova. And so you had to focus those planets on researching. And if you produced enough research points, it would take it away. Um, so there will be things that will be, be both positive and negative. Sometimes the random event could be that your species discovered... Um, additional ore veins on worlds increasing the um, the uh, mining capacity of that world and that's a benefit to you um, but again too the random events will be random and in particular they will be low in frequency so it's not something where you have events going on as you're trying to play out your strategy you have all these things going on that you're trying to interact with both positive and negative we're not going to do that um, you know, you might see a random event once every 30 turns or 40 turns. Um, and it may not even affect you at all. It may affect just another species. It may be that another species uh, found uh, better minerals on one of their worlds or perhaps they overmined one of their worlds and now that mineral, you know, maybe it's gone from a rich planet to just an abundant planet in minerals. So that's... It'll be things like that, uh, so that the player can really focus on their strategy and how they're going to interact um, with the galaxy. Because unlike a lot of 4X games that really focus on this, on the exterminate part of the 4X genre, we're wanting players to have the choice that if you want to exterminate, that's your choice. If you want to research, you can do that. If you want to just explore, you can do that too. And there will be end game scenarios that will reward players for doing that because it is difficult. Um, when you're playing a 4X game 
and, and especially I can only imagine Lord of Rigel when it's complete and you have 11 other players in the game besides yourself. You have a huge galaxy. You know, if you choose to want to do research, that will be a fine line of using good diplomacy and having some sort of a defensive military. Um, so we want to reward players for that, not just say, well, research is only good because it gives you better guns so you can kill everyone else with them. You know, that's not really a research victory. So we, we'll be working on that. And that's something that once we release our initial demo and we get um, we start working on the other systems like the economic system in the game and start tying those things together, um, we will be extensively um, beta testing and bringing in more community support to um, help us test, get your guys' feedback and see where we need to go with that. That was a good answer, I think. That was a good answer. Yeah, I think I think that's good. Probably a lot of talking, but it's it's going to be a great project. I mean, we're in the very early stages, but honestly, you guys are going to be, I think, really blown away by how close this is to Master of Ryan 2. I mean, that's why this game was made. Um, I don't play a ton of Forex uh, space strategy games anymore because I don't personally care for them. This game is kind of... Um, my response to modern 4x games and it's also uh, our co-founder um, ace it's his response as well um which is just really we need to get back to the basics um and it, sh it should be great tuxin are you built are we are we having a couple gooey issues here um no i'm uh, trying to fix the argument out of range exception thing ah <laughs> that's fun if there's any other questions anyone has, this would be a good time while we're trying to get everything going here. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. And, and we'll definitely, you know, so if we have a guy uh, who works for us kind of on the side. You know, everything right now is volunteer. We don't have a ton of cash. We, we truly are an indie studio. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not a Chris Roberts, you know, indie game where we have <laughs> 20, 30 million dollars and all these backers, you know. So... People like Toxinet, um, another one of, one of our developers that streams is VU Legends. Um, these guys are doing this out of just their excitement for the project, their own personal growth, and, and just wanting to develop their skills, and just generosity, because they're not being paid yet for this. Um, but our, our coder, uh, our coder, our website developer is the same way, and so he's had some real life stuff. Um, kind of block his time up, but we're hoping next week um, that I'll have a template for a site given to me and then I can start to get that online, but we have everything ready to go for it, and we'll kind of have a better hub um, for those of you interested in, in learning more about the game and to talk about the game and to give us feedback about the game to go to. Right now we just have a very basic forum, which is uh, lordofrigel.com slash forum that you can register on and just give us some basic feedback. It looks dead probably from an outsider's perspective because we do have a private developer section, but we are quite active um, and we'd love to have you guys on the forum giving us feedback or some of your ideas. <laughs> this is this is definitely true. Uh, did you watch... I, <laughs> Laracoon, you must have watched the U Legends uh, stream because I, I think he just played that yesterday morning during a team meeting, and, and we were ah, that guy is great. I forget what his name is, but that is a pretty amazing video. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, he he was playing a yeah, stuff yesterday. He was he was streaming that yesterday. Lol. <laughs> yeah, Vu is quite a character, but he's an awesome coder. Indeed. Ah, I don't know why we're getting this error, to be honest. <sighs> hmm. Well, at least it's spawning the nebula, so that's cool. Yeah, it definitely seems to be, even on the copy I have, it spawns, it just gives that, that exception error on my, on my end. Yeah. It's probably something simple. I'm just blind. <laughs> that's that's usually how coding works. It's always something simple. Yeah. Until you and yeah, you know, it's just until you see it, it's difficult to see. Mm -hmm. So uh, did and you want to tweak the um, 
spiral variables? Yeah, I think spiral is the one that we want to look at. I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, cluster looks great. I think I think we're really good there. I think we want to. Oh, oh, doesn't like that. That's interesting. I just try. Oh, there it goes. So yeah, from system view, you can't get back into the main menu using the main menu button, but you can from Galaxy View though. Yeah, I I think View Legends did that on purpose. I think I talked. Oh, to did him he? About okay. That. Yeah, I'll I'll get him. All right. Or. I so could that, link it up, but I don't want to want to touch this UI stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you. Uh, okay. Um. So let's see here. So Tuxina, let's just go ahead and pick a galaxy size. That's a spiral. We'll start with that first. Mm. Oh. Do you want to, you, you want to start with like legendary? Start with the biggest one. Yeah, let's do legendary. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go on my end, um, make, and let's just make sure. I assume our seeds are the same, right? They're S D D G D F S. If you start FS. from the um, main menu, it should be, yeah, S G T blah blah blah. Okay, perfect. And that's it. It's another feature that we have in our game too is that um, if you and a friend want to play the same galaxy, we have a seed code that you can adjust um, so that. Our, you know, quote unquote random generator though is based on a seed, so you can adjust all those things um, and play in the same galaxy. Think about Minecraft; it, it's the same concept. Yes. Oh no! Yeah, uh, gosh. It's just there we go. Jeez, I just I don't know. Really, really. Oh, it keeps pausing too. That doesn't help. Yeah, oh, 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 that's a problem. I is it? Oh. oh, there it goes. I just think things just being very touchy today. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. I, oh, well, actually, I know exactly why. It's because we're streaming live with most people we've ever had watching our, our stream today. So thank you guys for the good luck. We appreciate that. Uh, oh, by the way, I love the see. subtle 3D effect of being nebulous. Yes, yeah, because they are three D objects in and of themselves. Yeah, yep. which presents so many problems when Ace and I try to figure out what we want to do for the um, the uh, using the, when you move around the dust and the star effect. Mm -hmm. So just let's just let you guys know too. Right now, as you see Tuxinet kind of sliding around the screen there, um, that made a very different one than it made for ours. Or no, the, the I went from the spiral and changed some stuff. Ah, okay. Um, but uh, the what was I going to say? Ha 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 ha! Oh yeah. So right now you're looking at a very basic, um, and it's hard to see on the stream even if you go into system view. But as you're moving around, there will be a shader that provides like a a, a gas, kind of like a stardust effect, and as well as some basic star movement as you're moving around. This at this point, our main focus on this hasn't been the bells and the whistles. It's just getting the the uh, shape of the galaxy that we're looking for. Yeah, the basic fundamentals. Uh, and, yeah, and then we'll, we'll of course make it all pretty and polished for you guys. I think the main thing. Like for me, it's the spin speed in the spiral galaxy we have now. Like, just for me, it seems way too swirly. Like it spins too fast. Yeah, let's let's see real quick here what you have on your. I need to quit messing with mine because mine's just like pausing constantly. It's so weird. I, I think part of it is is because it's it's the air that it's given. I think, and then it's trying to like compensate for that. Like, kind of like, freezes up on. Mm, yeah. Their stuff. Uh, I think we're gonna need to like put some of these um, generator variables in some kind of JSON table because we can't have one uniform uh, setting for them all. I think. Okay, that's no problem. You know me; I love writing JSON tables. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So, and that's another thing too. And we're we're doing the JSON tables. Not obviously in this scenario. It kind of works out for. Um, I also have different galaxy uh, sizes. Um, but one of the things that we're trying to do with the JSON tables and just the overall design of the game is trying to make it very modable 
for you, you all so that if you um, are wanting to make you know make adjustments to the game add your own um, planet names adjust stuff however you want to do it you'll have a nice simple JSON table to make those kind of adjustments with um, so the way this galaxy gen works is it pretty much Tuxinet has his magical code, but it reads off of, a, off of a bunch of JSON tables, which gives him probability and odds of things occurring. Um, and so, you, you know, once the game's released, you guys should be able to go through, adjust those variables, and make them however you want them to be, uh, to make it work for you. Uh, will there be uh, some kind of fog of war? Um... There's not going to be a fog of war, I guess, in the sense of most RTS games. So you're not going to have, like, like Tuxinet here has this barred uh, galaxy going. You know, it's it's not going to be like, oh, I can't see the top half of it. Um, you'll see the stars, but you won't see the names. You won't see who possesses them. Um, and that's the way Master of Ryan handled them, and I think that's a, a pretty good way to, to handle it. Um... If you're a species that can travel faster than light, chances are you probably at least can see the stars, you know, in your own galaxy. Um, it's just you probably don't know who controls them or what's there. You can just see the stars shining. So that's kind of the look we've gone for, too, is that there's... It's not so much a fog of war as it is just a lack of knowledge. You know the star exists, um, but you don't know what it is. Um... We will not have there 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 are trading fleets that will help your economy, um, but it but there, it'll it'll kind of be stuck to that. Um, this game is about the broad strokes, um, so PvP for us, um, it, it the things that you do whether it's ships or you're looking at merchants moving around. They're to help you with the broad strokes of controlling an empire. Um, so there won't be anything like that. What merchants will do in this game is they'll provide you an economic boost. But one of the things that we really liked in um, Civ Five expansions was culture. Um, and that seemed to provide a really different way to win a game and get cultural victories. So something we're going to be working on is... Um, adding culture to the game and using merchants and their trading of resources as a way for you to influence other species be, and, and um, you can gain a victory through that as well. So that's, that's kind of more of the way we want to use uh, species or air or not species, but merchants or any sort of interaction with ships. It's, it's all more or less the broad strokes kind of stuff. I'm just messing just around with different messy. numbers, I guess. Uh. You know, I was looking at the um, is it the legendary size spiral, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, is there a way that we can get the core to be larger? So, like, like there's a there's a core where all where all the arms link. Yep. But I'm wondering if we yep. can make that bigger. And then spread that, and then but add more spacing between the stars so that the stars extend further out into the arms towards their tip. Um, so you want the so, like, so you want stars in the middle and out arms, of course. But uh, yeah, how, how did you want the distribution? You wanted a bigger core. I want a bigger core, but I don't want it. I don't want it to be bigger because we're packing more stars into it. You know what I'm trying to say? Like oh, I don't want yeah. there to be. Yeah, so, you know, it seems like a lot of, with the current numbers that we have, a lot of what's happening is is that stars are getting packed into that center core, and that's fully loaded. Mm -hmm. And then as you get out to the arms, it's, it's running out of stars to fill the arms with. And what I want to do is, I want to have, a, I want to have the arms make a shape in the middle that's a, 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 that's a larger circle, but spread the distribution so that it's more sparse in the middle, so that we have more stars that are getting pushed out into those outer arms. Yeah, I guess I can do that, yeah. That's an interesting number you combination you have there as well. 
Yeah, basically a high random threshold. Um, gotcha. And some stuff like that. Doesn't really look like spirals per se, but oh well. Kind of, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there is way too many stars in the middle. Yeah, because you can tell with how patterned it is that the game is just shooting out mm -hmm. the, the the dots in a sequence because it's the only sequence that it meets the objectives of having them not you know overlap and stuff like that. Yep. Yep. Um, I guess we could do like a um. There's so many different ways. Uh, I'll do some magic, I guess. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's what you're good at. Oh, by the way, who was that earlier? I think it was Cube. About the Facebook categorization, it was Cube. You're a very smart man. I did find it, but it's it's under someplace different than what I was looking at. So the change has been made, and I appreciate it. That's much better. But yeah, when I was looking at how to make a Facebook page for this, um, so many other games I'm looking at, even games like Bioshock, were listed as under games and or yeah, toys and games or something like that. Um, and some of the other great indie games out there, like. Um, Star Trek Excalibur were the exact same way, but yeah, perfect. The, the change has been made, and I really appreciate that information. Like, we could do, like, um, we'll define the core as, like, X amount of Unity units from the um, perfect. middle. And we could either yeah. have, like, a percentage value of how many stars the threshold is in there uh, or something like that. On Hitbox, is there any way to post an image? Uh, yeah, I'll make you a moderator and you'll be able to do that. Perfect. I, I was thinking maybe just posting these guys some, some, cool, uh, some cool images mm -hmm. that we have too. Just some stuff that we haven't shown everyone yet. Actually, I see one showing them our. This is un, this is just under um, development. It's not done, um, but we just got this posted on our on our board this morning um, in our developer section. But just to give you an idea of what our cat species are going to look like, and, and I want to note this cat looks very funny because it has no fur, but it will look be much better when there's fur on the on the cat. Um, but this is our uh, Catraxi species that you're going to be seeing in our demo. Oh, and here's Ace as well. Oh, yeah, you need to oh, actually, link, it. link it. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. And so this is going to be one of our two species that you're going to be seeing. Imagine more fur, though. Um, but one of the two species that you're going to be seeing um, in our um, demo. And Adam Rohrbaugh here, this is Ace. This is our co-founder, if you're interested in you know, knowing that. Uh, this, is, this is one of the other brains behind the operation. Oh, I need to open up, up a window. We're right back. Yep. If you guys have any more questions, go ahead and post. You kind of have the um, Adam and myself are kind of the two uh, game designers behind the project. So if you guys have any questions, we're definitely the guys to ask. So 
feel free to post a bunch of questions uh, while Tyson is uh, working on something. Yep. Uh, I'll make them public um, so you can change them in the inspector. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, in terms of gameplay, you're going to look at something like Master of Orion, and I'd love to get a link. In fact, I'm going to go get a link here for Ooh, people to look I, at. And I you can get it on GOG, too. It's, it's, I think it's only like... Uh, see, right now it's five ninety nine on GOG for the first two of the series, but it's a 4X game. So you're going. it's going to be something akin to... Imagine if Civilization were on the galactic level. So, you know, instead of thinking of just having individual cities like you do in Civ, you're going to have planets and, st and star systems that you're going to be in control of and moving out from. Um, but very much the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and post a link on GOG for... Um, but it's going to have just a link for uh, Master of Ryan 1 and 2 to purchase. It's like five ninety nine, and you Definitely give it a go. It's an old game, um, but... I would, you know, definitely say buy it, support it. You'll love it. Um, when you read a lot of reviews of 4X strategy games, um, you'll still hear people kind of re refer to Master of Ryan 2 and try to compare those two. Uh, or try to compare whatever the new game is to Master of Ryan 2. Um, so everything's going to be turn-based. There is no real-time combat. Um a lot of games nowadays are kind of going for like Star Drive 2, kind of has more of a real-time combat element. Our game won't be that way. Um, so when you're in tactical, you'll kind of have your fleet, their fleet, and you'll click on your ship. You'll click to move it, you know, do whatever you want to do. If you want to move it forward, cloak your ship, um, et cetera, make your move. It'll have a real-time, or not real-time, but uh, an animated you know, effect for what you're trying to do, whether it's movement or uh, shooting an enemy ship. Um, and then you roll through your ships, and then you hit the end of your turn, and then you, you, um, you the AI will go through its turn as well, and you'll go back and forth in that fashion. And I see that Ace has joined Ace. the stream. That's cool. Yes, yes. Just don't hope this will be like one of these small changes that will make me hunt bugs for centuries. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> but that is that is part of the process. And we've actually, just to give you guys a little bit of information, we've been working on, so when uh, Tuxnet was going through and, and loading up um, star systems, and you could see like the individual planets, what you don't see yet is we've been working on a system view that gives you information um, for for that. Um, and we've had I think we I think we started working on it last Saturday, if I'm correct. And we worked on it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and I believe Tuesday. Until we finally had a good iteration of it working where it was robust enough to um, um, really be robust enough to work in all of our scenarios. It looked great in mock-ups. Um, Adam here, our ace, um, is superb at doing just good mock-up work. Um, and it looked great in a 2D scene when we could like control where everything was with the planets, but as planets were rotating and orbiting, it just got very complex looking. Um, and probably for a lot of other games, it would have worked, but we're trying to keep our interface simple. So this has been quite the process as we go from our design dock and trying to make it work in, in the 3D environment. You know, there are kind of some changes, but um, 
yeah, you know, this is this has been quite the process. But I think at this point, hopefully, next couple of days we'll have System View working, and I think Tuxnet's been working on our Galaxy generator since about July. I want to say. Yeah, it's, it's taking up yeah, the better part of my time. Yeah, I, I've managed but, to set up some basic stuff for the tactical demo, but yeah, it it's out of my hands now. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and as, and, as, and as Ace points out, you know, we're 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 looking at keeping it single player. We we really thought about having a multiplayer, and you know, so many games nowadays are multiplayer. But one of our philosophies kind of is, you know, I'd rather have someone, a player, come to us and say, "I bought your game. It's a great game. Everything's done perfectly." But I wish you would have also added this than us having a feature like something like multiplayer and the player comes and says, well, you have this feature, but it's kind of only half done. It doesn't play right. And um, if any of you have ever played turn-based strategy games, um, especially when they're big in scale like Master of Orion is, they can get very boring. Um, it, it can get boring when you play a hot seat game, when you're playing two players at one computer, it can be boring. It can be even more boring when you're playing um, online and you don't have the other person there. And Civilization runs in the same issue. I love Civ Five, uh, play Civ Five a lot. Um, but even playing multiplayer in my own home with friends um, can get very boring. And I'm not quite sure that we have a way to fix the inherent drawbacks that there are to a turn-based game, especially when it comes to the combat part. Um, so we're really going to focus on just trying to provide you with the best single-player experience that we can provide you with. If somewhere along the way we figure out this way to make turn-based multiplayer more exciting or more fun or something that can draw you in, we will absolutely add it um, as some sort of an expansion pack or maybe uh, Lord of Rigel 2 or something like that. But... For the time being, we're really just focusing on getting back to the basics on game mechanics and user interface and just providing you with the best experience that we can provide you with. And by the way, uh, Ace, your nebulas, which I've finally gotten to see in-game for the first time, look really good. They look really nice. Yeah, they're awesome. I like them. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, I think it, at, at this point, if, if I had a, a qualm to make, it's the fact that the it's a little better looking than even the stars of the black hole look. <laughs> it looks really good. Oh. Uh, it's nice having that gaseous volumetric object, especially uh, some of them because as you're moving around, actually they're they're um, they're actually high. They're actually coming. They're closer to the camera than what the uh, than what the stars are. So it kind of gives it this volumetric 3D look. But it just depends. Especially the uh, the green nebulas. That's That definitely seems to be the ones that have the height to them versus the purple and the, uh, the red ones. I think these new rules are going to work. They should. Perfect. Yeah, you know, there can, and, and that could, you know, we were just talking about this with uh, VU Legends. Maybe it was last Saturday when we, st we started working on System View because he's worked on prior projects that have had multiplayer and he has the, the technical expertise to do um, multiplayer code and, and to make that work and as I started talking, I was like, oh, yeah, we can make it work. We can do this and then the other. But I started talking about more and I explained to him more about what the Forex is. Like, it's not it's not as easy as just here's net code. Here, here's the game. Now it's turn-based and, 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 and it's multiplayer and it works. One of the ideas, potentially, and I don't even know how the heck we would try to do it, is try to have something where the game is somewhat real-time but it's a very slow real time. Mm -hmm. But the the issue that you would run into is um, 
when you have a thousand twenty four star galaxy and you get big enough and powerful enough, it would be very hard to control. And if we did multiplayer, one of my kind of benchmarks is is that I don't have to take the single player game and dissect it and slaughter it and put it into certain conditions to make multiplayer to work. So I think multiplayer could work in a smaller galaxy, maybe 32 to 64 stars would be great. Um, even trying to do some sort of a real time element to it. But I think we get, when you get into uh, 256, 512 or 1024 star galaxies, it's just going to be crazy because by the, you know, jumping around between your stars and you're ultimately going to end up just fixating on a couple key worlds that you've built up for production or research or whatever you've chosen to do. Um, and ultimately that changes the fundamental gameplay dynamic. So it's, it's really, it's a different game, which it's like, well, then why do we have Lord of Rigel as a, you know, a 4X turn-based strategy game? You know, it's, it's just very difficult. But if someone on here has an amazing idea, we'd love to hear it. Um, cause it's, it's something that we've thought about extensively, but you know, someone else out there may have a great idea on how to make it work and we'd love to hear it. Um, I think it worked. Um, it's stuck in an infinite loop, stuck. so at least it can find new location for stars. Because I chose the percentage too low, so that's good, I guess. Oh, good. Yeah, and and that's kind of, yeah, and and that's what I was just talking about, and and, and I I thought uh, Morland that that might be a way to go um, with it, but I think the problem is is even if you had real time you're still going to kind of draw things out. So what's a good time frame and good pacing for, let's say, a 64-star galaxy, I think would be different for like a 1,024-star galaxy because you'd want to allow the player more time to jump around to the different worlds when in a bigger galaxy versus a smaller galaxy. But, I, you know, I think you're right, and, I, and I've had a similar idea that that, that may be an avenue down the road to really look at and to try um, once this game is released and it's, it's, you know, and we're not worrying about, can we just even like make a game, you know, um, trying to just experiment with that within the framework of Lord of Rigel and saying, okay, let's take out the turn-based elements. Now let's try incorporating some of these real time elements and then trying to play with that, you know, Yeah, and, and I don't think, you know, in terms of scale, it's going to be bigger than something like StarCraft. You know, I don't want I don't want players to worry about individual miners on a, on a world or individual farmers or researchers. What I what I want players to think about and and and, and to think about for a 4X game is something like you know, I need to take this whole star system because it has four or five worlds that are mineral rich that I need to feed my industrial, you know, this war machine that I'm building to invade this other species, right? This is a key star system that I need. So I want to provide uh, the player with a sense of scale um, that most typical RTSs don't have. Where I think it would be good to take that RTS element is if we pulled out the time, if we pull out the turn-based element and we just said, okay, let's assign a value. If the, if the player chooses to build a ship, we're going to make that ship, rather than take 20 turns, it's going to take, you know, two minutes. And so the game's still going, both players are still actively playing and they can play at the same time because uh, the galaxy is real time. Um, but I think it would take a lot of um, time uh, and a lot of play testing to figure out what those times would look like, um, especially in terms of scaling, because that's the biggest issue. Because, you know, in a turn based game it's up to the player how long they want to take right you can make a, a one second turn and just hit the turn button from one turn to the next and you're fine or you can choose to take an hour for a turn and like click on every single 
little planet and be like, okay, I, I want to make sure that I have exactly this much research or whatever. Um, so that's kind of the difficulty in it. In, in a, it's a great thing about turn-based game, but it's also a difficult thing because the turn kind of kills it for multiplayer. It just makes it a lot more difficult. But I think trying to incorporate some sort of a real-time element will be the only way that we can make multiplayer work. I just think it's an inherent flaw um, in any in any sort of uh, turn-based game to have multiplayer because you're going to have that weight. It's just going to exist. And you can see here too in this new game menu just to give you an idea. Oh, Tuxnet pulled it away. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah, I can go back there if you want to talk about this. No, 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 it's fine. Go ahead, work. No, I, I just saw it for a second because the stream's behind, you know, in real time. Um. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Cube. <laughs> I appreciate your comment. So yeah, in the new game menu here, just to kind of give you guys a basic kind of idea, and there's two icon sets here that are missing. They are done. Um, they're just not in yet. Our gooey guy VU legends. You haven't pushed it basically. Um, yeah, it hasn't pushed it yet. So our lead programmer doesn't have it to show you guys here, but the easy will have, uh, you'll have like easy, medium, hard. Um, and we're pushing as like a part of our Kickstarter, like, like a little stretch goal be to add like a 1996 mode, which is just like an insane mode where you can't save. You just have to play it from start to finish. Imagine um, that's an you have opponent moment. control. Yeah, and uh, you'll, you'll have size control, galaxy size control, and that's going to control, um, for instance, if you choose like a spiral arm galaxy, you'll have more arms in a larger galaxy versus a smaller one. Um, and then um, then, we're, then you'll have control over like how mineral rich your galaxy is. Um, and then as well, I'm trying to remember all the different objects. If, I'll, I'll also look on my system here because I already forgot all the different options that we have for this. Hang on here. If I oh yeah, I, forgot, I can't get back to the main menu because it's system view doesn't play nice right now. If you just go out of system view though, can do there. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. But yeah, it's just I know it has to do with with the Nebula integration because it wasn't doing this before. It's yeah, just, it is. I, this, this is my first time with. This. Yeah. It's okay. We'll get to work. It's why it's why the game's in alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Something in alpha. Something. Yeah. The, the these things are are bound to happen. I'm I'm quite okay with that. I'm not to actually completely get out of this in Unity. Yeah, I'm gonna close the window again. Be right back. Oh yes, so we have uh, richness. Then you can choose like galaxy age, and then so kind of you'll have richness, age, and anomalies, and those are just variables in your galaxy. So richness will determine um, what kind of re like how many planets have uh, poor resources but are highly um, habitable worlds, um, or if you want uh, a world that has rich planets but they're very hostile planets. Um, so you can adjust that, and then galaxy age, older galaxies being more organic, um, you can have more star systems or a younger galaxy or an average based galaxy, just more variables for you to control. And then you also have an anomalies uh, button, so that'll place more nebulas, more black holes, more pulsars um, in your galaxy if you want to make things interesting. Um, so that's kind of... Uh, that's kind of the different controls that you have. Oh, and you also have your tech level, which will determine where you start in the game. So there'll be a mode called Dawn, which is essentially, as we get further in, we've, we've started to develop some backstory and lore to this world, but we're trying to keep it very open because we don't want you, the player, to feel confined to our story. So essentially, Dawn is, your species has just discovered FTL technology, faster than light technology, um, and you can move out to the stars, and you'll, you'll essentially start with 
one star system with your home world and like a scout or something like that and you'll start to move out from there um there's uh let's see here go back there's developed which will kind of give you like a few colonies and some basic tech um and then you'll have advanced which is you you control numerous colonies and and you've researched the couple the first few tech items uh, for a few parts of the tech research tree um, so it just kind of depends where in the game you, you want to get started. <laughs> yes, C joke, yes. indeed. Yeah, yeah, he's on the voice here. Yeah, I'm just not saying very much. Uh... Hmm, I don't know why it's just done wanting to do stuff. Need to fix this. Um, okay. Okay, there is something wrong with my code. <laughs> Figure it out. Uh, it just doesn't want to. It hangs up basically. It's it crashes. Uh. It, yes. Oh well. Uh, Ace, you should check out check out the developer. Uh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. the developer section. Uh, Raven just posted the kind of more fleshed out uh, top for the Katraxi. It looks actually. I'll just post it here because I don't think it's a big deal. People can kind of see kind of what we're doing for concepts. Uh, know that we are alive and well. Oh, yeah, by the way, Akiris, I I think we need to like announce streams in the future. We're rocking like yeah, 16, this 17 is great. views. Yeah. Which for us is a record, which is great. We're glad that you guys are here for it. So we'll definitely be doing this. And we're going to try to have more of a online presence. We've been working on this project, I want to say, since April. Uh, yeah, April 2014. But we've kind of been, you know, it's it's tough starting in, <laughs> up an indie game. Uh, it's kind of funny because uh, Ace and I, Adam, and I've had a few conversations uh, about... You know, why don't games do this? Why don't games do that? And as we've started to develop this game, it's like, ah, that's why games, you know, games haven't done this because it's difficult to put these things together. So sometimes it can be things like, why don't more games have more unique artwork for each of their species? And, and so, you know, we found that finding artists that can put out, you know, really quality work, work is is difficult, especially like in our case as an indie studio, we don't have a ton of money to pay people. In fact, right now, no money to pay people with. Um, you know, people with talent, they want money and they want it up front. So, you know, the people that we found, um, they put out top notch work and, um, and, you know, you can kind of see even with some of the modeling here that, uh, that I've posted here in the chat, you know, put out great work for us. But, um, you know, we kind of had to limit what we initially wanted to put out there because we initially we thought it would be great if we had unique buildings for each species, unique ships for each era, unique, you know, everything. And we want essentially wanted so when you got in the game, it was like you could play the Katraxi and you're just like, yep, this is built just for my species. It would feel, and if that's how you wanted to think in your mind that you were a Katraxi and you were leading the species once so that, it was as realistic for you as it could be because you had unique buildings and ships and everything. And, you know, now it's like, no, we're going to have to wait. That'll be, that'll have to be downloadable content later. <laughs> that is a pretty cool galaxy ship. So you have almost like the, the basis of the rebel symbol. Yeah. <laughs> <the bottom>. <laughs> <Like>, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I yeah. found the error. I was just being stupid basically. Oh, great. 
Yeah, I'm getting there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a upside pa uh, facing Pac Man, I guess. And so, uh, actually, Tuxton, I think this is a question for you from Larry Coon about being large address aware, because that's beyond my, my understanding. I just design stuff. <laughs> Tuxton is the technical guy. Uh, yeah, let me just read the question here. Uh, yes, the Logis Galaxy is 1024. And right now, it, it runs fairly smoothly, uh, even on like low end computers. Um, yeah, that's been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, when you guys see this game, I think you're going to be blown away because our uh, one of our goals has been everyone can play it, right? Because more people can play it, that means a larger community. For us, that means more revenues, which means that we can make future games for you, um, which, which is our passion. Um, and so Tuxnet's original Galaxy generator was pretty quick. I think it can generate Galaxy in, like it took like three or four seconds for like the biggest Galaxy. Yeah, for Legendary, yeah, it clocks seconds. in about three seconds, yeah. Um, but uh, Tuxnet and VU Legends have gone through and they've optimized more stuff. I mean, everything so far is 60 frames no problem whether you're running it on a laptop or a desktop um and by laptop i don't mean like some alienware four thousand dollar laptop but you know something more reasonable um and uh you know something with reasonable hardware specs we're even looking um at trying to get things to work really well and i, and I think they should work really well on like Intel integrated graphics, uh, which is a huge market now since all Intel CPUs have the integrated um, integrated video card on board. Um, but every everything so far runs at 60 frames a second. Um, on my system, I run things at 1920 by 1080 uh, for my monitor. Zero issues. Everything's just like a snap. It just instantly responds to you. Um, so. We're looking to do that, like, also with our ships. They are not high-poly ships. Oh, hey, Tuxinet. That is really close. Yep, I'm getting there. You're, you're getting really there, yeah. Like, very close. Just a little more distribution towards the outer part. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm trying to tweak. Yeah, yeah, you got that core spot on, man. Cool. <sighs> yes, they, yes, they, they do look pretty. I, I think we need to look at potentially finding a, a prettier way to do our black holes because they just when you when you have the nebula and the black hole together, they don't quite look, you know, at, at the same quality level. Um, I'd love to say we could have. So yeah, go. I, I can't. Oh, but um, yeah, and then the other thing too, uh, we're talking about just performance is looking at like our ships. So one of the things that's our basic thing is we don't like in combat all of our ships are very low poly so for instance and i'm going to link them up here for you guys in case you didn't see them on our um on our facebook page that i linked earlier this week um but you'll see when you look at uh some of our p3d links here and it'll, it'll show you like the poly count and stuff like that they're not they're not high poly ships. They're very low poly, but they look fantastic because we focused on textures. Because lots of video cards, even Intel integrated graphics, you can dedicate tons of video memory uh, to them. So they're low poly, um, and these are these are just the three Katraxi ships. And actually, I even linked a. This is this will be hopefully released next week. But this is just the model for our new uh, battleship Katraxi, which is. Um, Still only, I think, two sizes down from the biggest Katraxi ship we'll have. There'll be a Titan class and then a Doomstar class. Um, but, you know, you can see they look fantastic. Um, and so they, they shouldn't bog a system down. Another feature that we've added, too, for gameplay, but it'll work out for performance as well as um, you cannot have an infinite number of ships on the battlefield at the same time. 
So what'll happen is is you'll spawn I want to say something like 36 ships at a time for each side and then you'll have like a planet potentially for fighting in, in a star system you'll have like a planet and uh and like an orbiting space station so there's not a ton of objects on the screen at a time but um as you lose ships in your fleet it, let's say if you have a hundred ship fleet you can send in reinforcements as you lose ships so it's going to keep performance up but gameplay wise it's better too because um, one of my complaints when I play Master of Orion, and I still still play Master of Orion even today, um, is that when you have a huge number of ships, when you have like 50, 60 ships, and the AI has, you know, 50, 60 ships, you know, imagine an old, um, old colonial firing line. You know, everyone, you kind of run down your list of, uh, your list of ships and shoot, then you have to wait for the AI to do the same thing. And so turns can get very long, very drawn out, and very slow. So we've chosen to kind of lower that number um, so that turns go a little quicker. You'll still have that big fleet feel, like you can send things in in waves, but the game will pace itself better because the turns are going to be quicker. Instead of trying to run through a million ships, you'll just have at maximum 36. And so um, it's just it'll make things a little better for the player, we think. But also, performance will be greatly improved because you're not rendering as many objects at one time. And actually, too, I think I'm also... Uh, I think I'm, I'll do a little sneak peek here because you guys have been great and uh, you've joined us today. I'd like to show you just a little sneak peek of a couple links for our human ships. Ooh. Uh, just because I, I was going to post this next next week uh, for everyone, but it, you guys are here today, and it's great, and you guys have been uh, had lots of great questions and comments for us. So I'd like to show you uh, a human. This this will be a human cruiser. So this is one of the smaller human ships, but you're going to see uh, a second earlier about just the complete design difference in terms of the look. You'll see the contracts. You have lots of. Uh, points to them and they're completely asymmetrical in their design human ships you'll see um they will be um very symmetrical very smooth looking um and so the you know the reason we chose these two is these two species is that you can kind of see the design range that we're going for in this game and i still think um as we're developing it and we're getting more um, honed in on our concept artwork, I think you'll see that there may even be more variety with our other alien species. Um, our concept artist has done some great work uh, fleshing out some really unique species. Um, so I, I think as we kind of get a better picture on our species, we can take more of their personalities and integrate them into the design of their ships. And actually, too, I think I'll post the human star base as well. But I'll post more of these next week. There are some more. Um, there are some more human ships that we have done as well. Oh, I found the source of the rebel bug. I guess. Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, I think we need to have the core size equals to the random threshold size oh okay yeah something along those lines so now we just need to get these arms to extend out more or Indeed. more filled up but yeah we're getting close so this is all being adjusted within a json file correct uh it's not now or it's, we'll, uh, it shouldn't be a it's problem it's not now but we will be doing that okay yeah. So once we get some numbers locked down here, um, yeah, Ace, definitely. More nebulas, more color would be good. Yeah, because the nebulas look fantastic. They really do. Oh, yeah, I'm checking the stats on the side, and uh, we're way into the constraints of, like, Intel graphics cards when it comes to VRAM usage. So oh, cool. perfect, yeah. So this should pretty much run on everything, and it's going to look just beautiful. Um, 
honestly, I, as we get further into this, you know, we, we had this huge idea. The Cisco. <laughs> yes, the Cisco is pleased. But I, I, actually, I don't even think that that was even a reference that we used. I think it just ended up just being that way. Um, human ships, you'll find thus far, like I'll post the cruiser later this week on our Facebook page. Um, it has similar wing to it. Um, that's just going to be kind of one of the unique features uh, to the ship. But actually, I still think thus far the human frigate uh, is one of my favorite designs. And actually, kind of the frigates for both the Katraxi and the humans. Because I, the Katraxi frigate is just very stealthy but aggressive looking. You know, we're, we are thinking about doing Steam Early Access, but I've been hesitant to do it um, thus far because I wanted to go on Steam Greenlight and start our media campaign on there as well. Um, but after the latest, um, uh, I forget what Steam's big, like, once a year convention is um, in Seattle, but one of their big announcements was was that they're going to ditch um, Steam Greenlight. Um, and because they are seeing that a lot of good games are getting stifled out um, simply because of the way their system works. Um, and because you have to pay for Steamlight, and, and, I, and, I, and I don't mind paying out of my pocket to do that, um, but I, I don't want to pay for Steam Greenlight knowing that something different is around the corner. I'd rather wait a little bit, um, see what Valve chooses to do, and then we'll go ahead and, and, and go that route. But we do plan on having early access uh, to the game. We do plan on using Steam as one of our um, retail platforms. Um, GOG will probably be another one that we'll be looking at, as well as Humble Bundle through their retail store, um, as well as um, having our site be a retail store, which, by the way, if you do buy the game, please buy it from us directly because um, that way we get more of the profit because Steam and GOG, to a lesser extent, um, they take out um, their cut of the money if you buy it from us direct. It's it's more for us, and more for us means better artwork or you know another project that we can fund and get through quicker because we'll have money to pay people, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Greenlight did have a, a huge problem recently. Um, and, and the sad part is, too, is you see a lot of indie developers that have these amazing games, and they'll post things and say, well, I tried to get Greenlight on Steam, but you know I couldn't get the hits or whatever. And people, they'll show the game off on, as, as part of their, their blog uh, post about you know the problem that they have with Steve Greenlight. And people are responding and saying, well, this was an awesome game, but I never saw it, and I would have funded that game had I saw it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I, I think I think Steam is seeing, or not Steam, but Valve is seeing that there are some problems, and they've admitted for years that there are problems. It was that Greenlight was never a perfect system, but I think they're seeing that the sheer volume of good games um, that they're losing out on is, is, is more than they thought. Okay, so now you're getting the arms really close. Yeah, I just need to remove <laughs> the rebel stuff. Yeah, you're getting the arms really close. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of, you know, it's it's definitely it's been a learning experience for us. This is our first game, but in, well, my first game to release for profit. Um, many of our team members. Um, so Adam here, uh, who's who's his his call is is Ace um, Newman, and uh, no Odgrim's just from the from the Half Life community. I want to say, um, but I'm trying to think, is anyone else? We have Flipside as well, who's our music guy. I, I think that's it. But all these guys were part of the uh, Diaspora project. Um, so they were, uh, they've released a polished game, um, but it was freeware based on the Descent Free Space engine. So for Ace and I, this is our first kind of push into a for-profit game, and hopefully this will allow us to create a game studio to make more games like this. I 
think I know of a, another way, actually. You know the minimum you know? distance between stars stuff, yeah? The manual di the distance? Yeah, yeah, we, we have, like, a in the generator, like... You can, yes. Yeah. Oh, you, you just want to increase it? Yeah, I, like... We could have two uh, distance variables.